you are listening to It Ends With Us, authored by Colleen Hoover and narrated by the YouTube channel Audiobooks with Keeper of Lost Stories. Please subscribe for more such audiobooks. Thank you. Chapter 29 Alisa drops onto the couch beside me and Riley. I miss you so much, Lily, she says. I'm thinking about coming back to work a day or two, a week. I laugh, a little shocked by her comment. I live downstairs and I visit almost every day. How can you possibly miss me? She pouts as she pulls her legs up beneath her. Fine, it's not you I miss. I miss work and sometimes I just want out of this house. It's been six weeks since she had Riley, so I'm sure she would be cleared to come back to work. But I honestly did not think she would even want to come back now that she has Riley. I bend forward and give Riley a kiss on her nose. Will you bring Riley with you? Alisa shakes her head. No, you keep me too busy for that. Marshall can watch her while I work. You mean you don't have people for that? Marshall is passing through the living room when he hears me say that. Shush, Lily, don't speak like a rich girl in front of my daughter. Blasphemy. I laugh. That's why I come over here a few nights a week. Because it's the only time I laugh. It's been six weeks since Ryle left for England and no one knows what happened between us. Ryle has not told anyone, and neither have I. Everyone, my mother included, believes he simply left for the study at Cambridge, and that nothing has changed between us. I also still haven't told anyone about the pregnancy. I have been to the doctor twice. It turns out I was already 12 weeks along the night. I found out I was pregnant, which makes me 18 weeks now now. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. I've been on the pill since I was 18. Apparently being forgetful a few times caught up with me. I'm beginning to show, but it's cold out so it's been easy to hide. No one suspects a thing when you have on a baggy sweater and a jacket. I know I need to tell someone soon, but I feel like Ryle should be the first one I tell. And I don't want to do that over a long-distance phone conversation. He will be back in six weeks. If I can somehow keep things quiet until then, I will decide where to go from there. I look down at Riley and she is smiling up at me. I make silly faces at her to make her smile more. There have been so many times I have wanted to tell Elisa about the pregnancy But it makes it hard when the secret I am keeping is being kept from her own brother. I don't want to put her in that kind of situation, no matter how much it kills me, that I can't talk to her about it. How are you holding up without Rao? Alisa asks. You ready for him to come home? I nod, but I don't say anything. I always try to brush off the subject. When she brings him up, Alisa leans back into the couch and says, Is he still liking Cambridge? Yes, I say, sticking my tongue out at Riley. She grins. I wonder if my baby will look like her. I hope so. She is really cute. But am I? I might be a little partial. Did he ever figure out the subway system there? Alisa laughs. I swear, every time I talk to him, he's lost. He can't figure out whether to take the A line or the B line. Yeah, I tell her. He figured it out. Alisa sits up on the couch. Marshall! Marshall walks into the living room and Alisa pulls Riley out of my hands. She hands her to Marshall and says, Will you change her diaper? I don't know why she asks him that. I just changed her diaper. Marshall scrunches up his nose and lifts Riley out of Alisa's arms. 
Are you a stinky girl? They are wearing matching onesies. Alisa grabs my hands and yanks me off the couch so fast, I squeal. Where are we going? She does not answer me. She marches toward her bedroom and then slams the door once we are both inside. She paces back and forth a few times and then she stops and faces me. You better tell me what the hell is going on right now, Lily. I pull back in shock. What is she talking about? My hands instantly go to my stomach because I think maybe she has noticed. But she does not look at my stomach. She takes a step forward and pokes a finger in my chest. There is no subway system in Cambridge, England, you idiot. What? I'm so confused. I made that up, she says. Something hasn't been right with you for a long time. You are my best friend, Lily, and I know my brother. I talk to him every week, and he isn't the same. Something happened between you two, and I want to know what it is right now. Shit, I guess this is happening sooner rather than later. I slowly bring my hands up to my mouth, not sure what to tell her. How much to tell her? I had no idea until this moment how much it's been killing me that I haven't been able to talk to her about this. I almost feel a little relieved that she reads me so well. I walk to her bed and take a seat on it. Alisa, I whisper, sit down. I know this is going to hurt her almost as much as it hurt me. She walks over to her bed and sits down next to me, pulling my hands to hers. I don't even know where to start. She squeezes my hands but says nothing. For the next 15 minutes, I tell her everything. I tell her about the fight. I tell her about Atlas picking me up. I tell her about the hospital. I tell her about the pregnancy. I tell her about how, for the last six weeks, I cry myself to sleep every night because I have never felt so alone and so scared. When I'm finished telling her everything, we are both crying. She has not responded to what I have told her with anything other than the occasional, Oh, Lily! She does not have to respond, though. Ryle is her brother. I know she wants me to take his past into consideration just like the last time it happened. I know she will want me to work things out with him because... He is her brother. We are supposed to be one big happy family. I know exactly what she is thinking. She is quiet for a long time as she struggles through everything. I have told her. She finally lifts her eyes to mine and squeezes my hands. My brother loves you, Lily. He loves you so much. You have changed his entire life and have made him someone that I never thought he could be. As a sister, I wish more than anything that you could find a way to forgive him. But as your best friend, I have to tell you that if you take him back, I will never speak to you again. It takes me a moment for her words to register, but when they do, I start sobbing. She starts sobbing. She wraps her arms around me and we cry over the mutual love we have for Ryle. We cry over how much we hate him right now. After several minutes of us sobbing pathetically on her bed, she releases me and walks over to her dresser to retrieve a box of tissues. We are both wiping our eyes and sniffing when I say, you are the best friend I have ever had. She nods. I know, and now I'm gonna be the best aunt. She wipes her nose and sniffles again, but she's smiling. Lily, you are having a baby, she says it with so much excitement, and it's the first moment I've been able to share any sense of joy over my pregnancy. I hate to say it, but... 
I noticed you put on weight. I thought you were just depressed and eating a lot since Ryan left. She walks to the back of her closet and starts pulling things out for me. I have so many maternity clothes to give you. We start going through clothes and she pulls down a suitcase and opens it. She begins to throw things toward the suitcase until it starts to overflow. I could never wear these, I tell her, holding up a shirt that still has the tag on it. They're all designer. I will get them dirty. She laughs and shoves them into the suitcase anyway. I won't need them back. If I get pregnant again, I will just have my people buy me more. She pulls a shirt off a hanger and hands it to me. Here, try this one on. I take my shirt off and then pull the maternity shirt over my head. When I get it into place, I look in the mirror. I look pregnant. Like you can't hide this shit pregnant. She puts a hand on my stomach and stares in the mirror with me. Have you found out if it's a boy or a girl? I shake my head. I don't really want to know. I hope it's a girl, she says. Our daughters can be besties. Lily? We both spin around to find Marshall standing in the doorway. His eyes are on my stomach. On Elisa's hand still on my stomach. He tilts his head. He points at me. You, he says, confused. Lily, there's a... Do you realize you are pregnant? Elisa calmly walks to the door and puts her hand on the doorknob. There are some things you are never, ever to repeat if you want to keep me as your wife. This is one of those things. Understood? Marshall raises his eyebrows and takes a step back. Yes, okay. Got it. Lily is not pregnant. He kisses Elisa on the forehead and looks back at me. I am not telling you congratulations, Lily, for absolutely nothing. Elisa shoves him all the way out the door and closes it, then turns back to me. We need to plan a baby shower, she says. No, I need to tell Ryle first. She waves over her hand dismissively. We don't need him to plan a shower. I will... We will just keep it between the two of us until then. She pulls out her laptop and for the first time since I found out I was pregnant, I feel happy about it. Chapter 30 It's rather convenient only having to take an elevator to get home from Elisa's as much as I want to move out of my own apartment at times. It's still strange living there. We only lived there a week before we split up and Ryle left for England. It never even had the chance to feel like home and now it feels a little tainted. I haven't even been able to sleep in our bedroom since that night. So I have been sleeping in the guest room on my old bed. Elisa and Marshall are still the only ones who know about the pregnancy. It's only been two weeks since I told them, which makes me 20 weeks along now. I know I should tell my mother, but Ryle will be back in a few weeks. I feel like I should tell him first before anyone else finds out. If I can just somehow hide my baby bump from her until he gets back to the States. I should probably just accept the fact that I'm more likely going to have to call him and tell him long distance. I haven't seen my mother face to face in two weeks. It's the longest we have gone without seeing each other since she moved to Boston. So if something doesn't happen soon, she will show up at my front door when I am not prepared. I swear my stomach has doubled in size these last two weeks alone. If someone sees me who knows me well, it will be impossible to hide. So far, no one at the floral shop has asked about it. I think I'm still on the cusp of 
Is she pregnant or just chubby? I start to unlock the door to my apartment, but it begins to open from the other side. Before I can pull the jacket over to hide my stomach from whoever is on the other side of the door, Ryle's eyes land on me. I'm wearing one of the shirts Alisa gave me, and it's kind of impossible to hide the fact that I'm wearing a maternity shirt when he's staring right at it. Ryle. Ryle is here. My heart begins to smash against the walls of my chest. My neck begins to itch, so I bring my hand up and rest it there, feeling the pounding of my heart against my palm. It's pounding because I'm terrified of him. It's pounding because I hate him. It's pounding because I've missed him. His eyes slowly crawl from my stomach to my face. A hurtful expression takes over him, like I have just stabbed him straight through the heart. He takes a step back into my apartment and his hands come to my mouth. He begins to shake his head in confusion. I can see the betrayal all over his face when he barely forces out my name. Lily? I stand frozen, one hand on my stomach, in protection the other hand still flat against my chest. I'm too scared to move or say anything. I don't want to react until I know exactly how he is going to react. When he sees the fear in my eyes and the small gasp of breath I am barely inhaling, he holds up a reassuring palm. I'm not going to hurt you, Lily. I'm just here to talk to you. He swings the door open wider and points into the living room. Look. He steps aside and my eyes fall to someone standing behind him. Now I am the one who feels betrayed. Marshall? Marshall immediately holds up his hands in defense. I had no idea he was coming home early, Lily. Ryle texted and asked for my help. He specifically told me not to say anything to you or Isa. Please don't let her divorce me. I'm simply an innocent bystander. I shake my head, trying to understand what I'm seeing. I asked him to meet me here so you would feel more comfortable talking to me. Ryle says, he's here for you, he's not here for me. I glance back at Marshall and he nods. It gives me enough reassurance to enter the apartment. Ryle is still somewhat in shock, which is understandable. His eyes keep meeting my stomach and then flicking away like it hurts to look at me. He runs two hands through his hair and then points down the hallway while looking at Marshall. We will be in the bedroom. If you hear me get, if I start to yell, Marshall knows what Ryle is asking him. I'm not going anywhere. As I follow Ryle into my bedroom, I wonder what the must be like to have no idea what might set you off or how bad your reaction will be. To have absolutely no control over your own emotions. For a brief moment, I feel a minuscule amount of sorrow for him. But when my eyes fall to our bed, and I remember that night, my sorrow diminishes completely. Ralph pushes the door shut, but doesn't close it all the way. He looks like he has aged an entire year. In the two months it's been since I have seen him, the bags under his eyes, the furrowed brow, the sunken posture. If regret took human form, it would look identical to Ryle. His eyes fall to my stomach again, and he takes a slow step forward, then another. He is cautious, as he should be. He reaches out a timid hand, asking for permission to touch me. I nod softly. He takes one more step forward and then places a steady palm against my stomach. I can feel the warmth of his hand through my shirt and my eyes snap shut. Despite the resentment I have built up in my heart towards him, it doesn't mean the emotions aren't still there. 
Just because someone hurts you does not mean you can simply stop loving them. It's not a person's actions that hurt the most. It's the love. If there was no love attached to the action, the pain would be a little easier to bear. He moves his hand over my stomach and I open my eyes again. He's shaking his head like he can't process what's happening right now. I watch as he slowly sinks to his knees in front of me. His arms snake around my waist and he presses his lips against my stomach. He clasps his hands around my lower back and presses his forehead against me. It's hard to describe what I feel for him in this moment. Like any mother would want for her child, it's a beautiful thing to see the love he already has. It's been hard not sharing this with anyone. It's hard not being able to share this with him. No matter how much resentment I hold toward him, my hands go to his hair while he holds me against him. Part of me wants to scream at him and call the police like I should have done that night. Part of me feels for that little boy who held his brother in his arms and watched him die. Part of me wishes I would have never met him. Part of me wishes I could forgive him. He unwraps his arms from around my waist and presses a hand into the mattress next to us. He pulls himself up and then sits on the bed. His elbows rest on his knees and his hands are drawn up to his mouth. I sit next to him, knowing we have to have this conversation, but not wanting to. Naked truths? He nods. I don't know which one of us is supposed to go first. I don't really have much to say to him at this point, so I wait for him to speak first. I don't even know where to start, Lily. He rubs his hands down, his face. How about you start with, I'm sorry I attacked you? His eyes meet mine, wide with certainty. Lily, you have no idea. I am so sorry. You have no idea what I've been through these past two months knowing what I've done to you. I clench my teeth together. I can feel my fingers as they fist around the blanket beside me. I have no idea. What he's been through? I shake my head slowly. You have no idea, Ryle. I stand up, the anger and hatred spilling out of me. I spin, pointing at him. You have no idea. You have no idea what it's like to go through what you have put me through. To fear for your life at the hands of the man you love. To get physically sick just thinking about what he's done to you? You have no idea, Ryle. None. F you. F you for doing this to me. I suck in a huge breath, shocked at myself. The anger just came like a wave. I swipe at my tears and spin around, unable to look at him. Lily, he says. I don't. No, I yell spinning around again. I am not finished. You don't get to say your truth until I have said mine. He's grabbing at his jaw, squeezing the stress out of it. He drops his eyes to the floor, unable to look at the rage in mine. I take three steps toward him and drop to my knees. I place my hands on his legs, forcing him to look me straight in the eyes while I speak to him. Yes, I kept the magnet Atlas gave me when we were kids. Yes, I kept the journals. No, I did not tell you about my tattoo. Yes, I probably should have. And yes, I still love him. And I will love him until I die because he was a huge part of my life. And yes, I am sure that hurts you. But none of that gave you the right to do what you did to me. Even if you would have walked into my bedroom and caught us in bed together, you still would not have 
the right to lay a hand on me. You goddamn son of a... I push off his knees and stand up again. Now it's your turn, I yell. I continue pacing the room. My heart is pounding like it wants out. I wish I could give it a way out. I would set the MF free right now if I could. Several minutes pass as I continue to base. Royal silence and my anger eventually just fall together into pain. My tears have exhausted me. I am so tired of feeling. I fall desperately onto my bed and cry into my pillow. I press my face so hard against my pillow I can barely breathe. I feel Ryle lie down next to me. He places a gentle hand on the back of my head, attempting to soothe away the pain he is causing me. My eyes are closed, still pressed to the pillow, but I feel him gently rest his head against mine. My truth is that I have absolutely nothing to say, he says quietly. I will never be able to take back what I did to you, and you will never believe me. If I promise it won't happen again, he presses a kiss against my head. You are my world, Lily, my world. When I woke up on this bed that night and you were gone, I knew I would never get you back. I came here to tell you how incredibly sorry I am. I came to tell you I was taking that job offer in Minnesota. I came to tell you goodbye. But Lily, his lips press against my head again and he exhales sharply. Lily, I can't do that now. You have a part of me inside of you. And I already love this baby more than I've ever loved anything in my whole life. His voice cracks and he grips me even harder. Please don't take this away from me, Lily. Please. The pain in his voice ripples through me and when I lift my tear-soaked face to look at him, he presses his lips desperately to mine and then pulls back. Please, Lily, I love you. Help me. His lips briefly meet mine again. When I don't push him away, his mouth comes back a third time, a fourth. When his lips meet mine the fifth time, they don't leave. He wraps his arms around me and pulls me to him. My body is tired and weak, but it remembers him. My body remembers how his body can soothe everything I'm feeling, how his has a gentleness in it that my body has been craving for two months now. I love you, he whispers against my mouth. His tongue sweeps softly against mine. And it's so wrong and so good and so painful. Before I know it, I'm on my back and he's crawling on top of me. His touch is everything I need and everything I shouldn't. His hand wraps in my hair and in an instant, I'm transferred back to that night. I'm in the kitchen and his hands is tugging my hair so hard it hurts. He brushes the hair from my face. At an instant, I'm transferred back to that night. I'm standing in the doorway and his hand is trailing across my shoulder right before he bites into me with all the strength in his jaw. His forehead rests gently against mine and in an instant, I'm transferred back to that night. I'm on the same bed beneath him when he slams his head against mine so hard I have to get six stitches. My body becomes unresponsive to his. The anger begins to roll back over me. His mouth stops moving against mine when he feels me freeze. When he pulls back and looks down on me, I don't even have to say anything. Our eyes, locked together, speak more naked truths than our mouth ever have. My eyes are telling his that I can no longer stand being touched by him. His eyes are telling mine that 
He already knows. He begins to nod slowly. He backs away from me, crawling down my body until he's at the edge of the bed with his back to me. He's still nodding as he comes to a slow stand, fully aware that he is not getting my forgiveness tonight. He begins heading toward my bedroom door. Wake, I say to him. He half turns, looking back at me from the doorway. I lift my chin, looking at him with finality. I wish this baby wasn't yours, Lyle. With everything that I am, I wish this baby was not a part of you. If I thought his world could not crumble more, I was wrong. He walks out of my bedroom and I press my face into my pillow. I thought if I could just hurt him like he had hurt me, I would feel avenged. I don't. Instead, I feel vindictive and mean. I feel like I am my father. Chapter 31 Mom I miss you. When I'm going to see you? I stare at the text. It's been two days since Ryle found out I'm pregnant. I know it's time to tell my mother. I'm not nervous about telling her I'm pregnant. The only thing that scares me is discussing my situation with Ryle. With her. Me. Miss you too. I will come over tomorrow afternoon. Can you make lasagna? As soon as I close out the text to her, I get another incoming text. Alisa, come upstairs and eat dinner with us tonight. It's homemade pizza night. I haven't been to Alisa's in a few days since before Ryle came home. I'm not sure where he's staying, but I assume it's with them. The last thing I want right now is to have to be in the same apartment as him. Me, who all will be there? Alisa. Lily, I would not do that to you. He's working until 8 tomorrow morning. It will just be the three of us. She knows me way too well. I text her back and tell her I will come over as soon as I finish up with work. What do babies eat at this age? We are all seated around the table. Riley was asleep when I got here, but I woke her up so I could hold her. Alisa did not mind. She said she does not want her wide awake when she is ready to go to bed. Worse milk, Marshall says with a mouthful. But sometimes I stick my finger in my soda and put it in her mouth so she can taste it. Marsha, Alisa yells. You better be kidding. Totally kidding, he says, although I can't tell if he really is. But when do they start eating baby food, I ask. I figure I need to learn this stuff before giving birth. Around four months, Alisa says with a yawn. She drops her fork and leans back in her chair, rubbing her eyes. You want me to take her to my place tonight so you guys can get a full night of sleep? Alisa says, no, it's fine. At the same time, Marshall says, that would be awesome. <clears throat> I laugh. Really, I live right downstairs. I don't work tomorrow. So if I don't get any sleep tonight, I can just sleep in tomorrow. Elisa looks like she's contemplating it for a moment. I could leave my cell phone on in case you need me, she says. I look back down at Riley and grin. Did you hear that? You get to have a sleepover with Aunt Lily. With everything Alisa is throwing in her diaper bag, it looks like I'm about to take Riley on a trip across the country. She will let you know when she's hungry. Don't use the microwave to heat the milk. Just put it in. I know, I interrupt. I've made her like 50 bottles since she's been alive. Alisa nods and then walks over to her bed. She drops the diaper bag down beside me. Marshall is in the living room feeding Riley one last time. So Lisa lies down beside me on the bed while we wait. She props her head up on her hand. Do you know what this means? She asks. No. What? 
I get to have sex tonight. It's been four months. I crinkle up my nose. I did not need to know that. She laughs and falls down on her pillow, but then sits straight up. Shit, she, she says. I should probably shave my legs. I think it's been four months since I did that, too. I laugh, but then I gasp. My hands move quickly to my stomach. Oh my god, I just felt something. Really? Elisa puts her hand on my stomach, and we are both quiet for the next five minutes. As we wait for it to happen again, it does, but it's so soft, it's almost unnoticeable. I laugh again, as soon as it happens. I did not feel anything, Elisa says, pouting. I guess it will be a few more weeks before you can feel it from the outside, though. Is this the first time you felt it move? Yeah, I've been scared. I was growing the laziest baby in history. I keep my hands on my stomach, hoping to feel it again. We sit quietly for a few more minutes, and I can't help but wish my circumstances were different. Well should be here. He should be the one sitting beside me with his hand on my stomach, not Elisa. The thought almost takes away all the joy I am feeling. Alisa must notice because she puts one of her hands on mine and squeezes. When I look at her, she isn't smiling anymore. Lily, she says, I've been wanting to say something to you. Oh God, I don't like the sound of her voice. What is it? She sighs and then forces a gloomy smile. I know you're sad that you're going through this without my brother. No matter how involved he is, I just know that this is going to be the best thing you have ever experienced in your life. You're going to be a great mom, Lily. This baby is really lucky. I'm glad Alisa is the only one in here right now. Because her words make me laugh, cry, and snot like a hormonal teenager. I hug her and tell her thank you. It's amazing how hearing those words gives me back the joy I was feeling. She smiles and then says, Now go get my baby and take her away from here so I can have some sex with my fully rich husband. I roll off the bed and stand up. You sure know how to bring levity into a situation. I would say it's your strong point. She smiles. That's what I'm here for. Now... Go away. To be continued, if you are liking this audiobook so far, do not forget to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for listening. I will see you tomorrow with the next part.